Hello, welcome to Dunkin' Egg Bricks, and to a little video that I've been threatening to make for a while now. I in fact promised it quite a long time ago, and that is a look at how I design my models using BrickLink Studio. So first and foremost, BrickLink, if you're not familiar with it, is a fantastic site where you can go and order Lego pieces, sets, minifigures, and uh, mocks in instruction form. Um, it's actually now owned by Lego, but it was set up as a separate company. But it's a great website, it's a place that I use to purchase all my bricks. This isn't a sponsored video or anything like that, it's just the site that I use. But the other thing that BrickLink does is it has a free program for you to design your own models, and that is called Studio. Um, it was originally written with a full stop between the D and the I-O, so it was stud.io, um, but uh, it does mean Studio. It was just a fun little pun there before. So first things first, you just go to bricklink.com, click on Studio. I think there's links at the top as well. And then you just click Download here. Now it's automatically come up with Download Studio 2.0 for Mac, because I'm on a Mac but then there are alternate versions down here below. So uh, obviously I already have this downloaded. It's very simple to do though. Just click download and then do what you need to do on your type of computer. But then you'll see I already have a studio up and running here. So we will click on it and here we are. Here is my master version of Hogwarts, complete with all the different bits. And uh, yeah, it might be a little bit slow to run just because I've got screen record on at the moment and there's a lot of information on display. So what I think I will do is I will click onto the Great Hall just here. This was the first piece of the castle that I designed and then click view. And if it loads up properly, there we go. We will now have the Great Hall. So that's the first feature to mention in Studio before I go into the actual designing process is that you can create submodels. All you need to do for that is just click on an element or elements, right click on it and then scroll down to uh, submodel. Here you can't do it because it's just a single element but if I select a second one to go alongside it I can actually create these into a submodel and then I give it a name so I'll just call it bricks if I can spell properly. Click OK. And that is now a submodel, so I'll now grab that and those pieces will move together and act as one. So we'll just put that back and then undo that. So this is the Great Hall submodel of my Hogwarts. It has gone through a few changes, um, but this allows me to look at the Great Hall as its own separate thing. If I go back to the full model briefly, it actually also gives me the option to move this around. Uh, if it ever loads, there we go. So we're down at the Great Hall end of the castle. Like I said, it does go a little bit slowly because I've got screen recording on as well. I can just move the Great Hall as one and you can see underneath that's where the kitchens are. And uh, I can just go back and pop that back in place. I can also hide submodels. So I'll just go on submodel and, uh, oh, in fact, no, it's down here. I've got to make sure I go to the right thing. Um, now I can't find it. Um, there it is, hide. Obviously <laughs> not got my brain in gear this, this morning. Uh, so hide that, yep, that just disappears, but it's not being deleted or anything, and that means I can see other things. Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's go back into the Great Hall, and I'll just show you the studio interface and how you go about designing things. So this is made up of individual Lego bricks. Um, they are all um, accurate to the real life ones. Um, there may be some slight discrepancies, and there are some things you really want to try in real life. But I find that this is the best tool for working things out and seeing how many things you're going to need, like how many bricks of different types. So the way that you build in this is you open up your uh, brick selection here and it has all of these categories going down the side. Now these are very similar to, but annoyingly not exactly the same as BrickLink categories. You do have different ways of organizing it, so you can organize by shapes. Um, this is very similar, um, but uh, you know it ultimately ends up with the, uh, with the same kind of thing. So here we have uh, Bricklink categories. So for instance, if I want to select a brick, I go down to bricks and here we have all of the bricks. They're presented in white when you see them in the menu. All you need to do is just click on one, drag it out onto the main screen. You can then focus on that brick if you want to and then uh, the camera will lock on and you can zoom in and that is your brick. So uh, that's your basic one by one brick placed. You'll notice there's a studded kind of base here. That's not actual bricks, that's just a grid so you can organize where things are. Now the next thing you can do is change the color of this brick. 
and that will mean you want to go over here to the color palette click on this drop down menu and at the moment I have hide unavailable colors clicked so uh, all that means is that the, the uh, list of bricks here are the colors that this one by one brick actually comes in so you can see it's uh, it's a pretty common brick comes in quite a lot of colors I'm not sure what these rubber colors are actually um, I see them all the time but I'm never 100% sure whether they're real um, so best to stick with the uh, normal and the pearl and the trans colors um, what you can do though if you're just not too fussed about getting the real bricks is you can untick that and this will just come up with a list of all of the brick clean colors and you can just choose anything so we'll go with medium dark pink so there we go that is a nice medium dark pink brick i think that is actually one of the colors it does come in anyway so uh yeah you can check that these are in uh, sort of alphabetical order oh in fact it doesn't come in medium dark pink let's choose medium lavender instead so there we go that is our single brick the reason there's lots of colors down here is these are all the colors that are used within this sub model um, in fact i think this might be all the colors that are used in hogwarts uh, in its entirety there's a lot of variation there so for instance uh, if you've got a lot of tan in your model as i do just here because it's the main color of hogwarts then you can just click on the tan icon here sometimes it is a little bit difficult to tell what the colors are you know if there are two very similar colors but you can always just click the drop down menu the other useful thing that this drop down menu shows you is the price so for instance an aqua brick is going to be quite expensive and this is apparently going to cost one pound fifty um, you know convert that into your local currency although it may uh, depend on where it's sourcing its information from um, whereas a blue brick is only going to cost three and a half p so you know there's a there's a real difference and it's good to just get a ballpark figure it's not always accurate but uh, you know it's uh, it does work pretty well so we've only got one brick here what we're going to want to do next is uh, add something else to it so we can just go ahead and copy it you can just use the uh, command or control c and v to copy and paste and then you can just stack that right on top so that just snaps together and uh, you can also put it to the side or basically anywhere that a real brick would be able to go it's not perfect doesn't work 100 percent of the time but it's pretty good and um, the next thing you might want to do is to rotate the brick and you can do that using your arrow keys so you can spin it around like that you'll notice it does clash with that other brick there but yep you can spin it around in any direction you want um, that only goes um, the sort of x and y and z axis directions so if you want to put it on any other um, direction what you're going to need to do is click on it click on the little tool there and then you can drag these arrows and you can do it by degrees on the further out you put it the smaller of an adjustment you can actually make so there's plenty of stuff there it's fairly easy when you actually play around with it and then if you want to get it back to a more regular orientation you can just snap it back onto an existing brick obviously that isn't the only brick that's available there are all the available bricks some of them are no longer in production like this one here with the uh, little hinge attachment sorry that's the wrong one it does sometimes pick up the wrong thing when you're clicking on it there we go um, and interestingly another function which sometimes works is find compatible bricks so you can click on that and it will then show all the bricks that can attach to it so in this case it's a lot of doors let's just grab one of these I remember these from some of the early Hogwarts uh, castle these type of doors so that just snaps on there and then you can turn that into a, a hinged piece so you can open the door basically most of this I found out just by playing around so honestly even if you're not super interested in it I would just download the software and have a play around until you find something that you really like so let's just get rid of those and then we'll take another look at the great hall so here is the great hall um, this is almost 100 percent accurate to the great hall i have in real life some of the bricks are in slightly different places just depending on what bricks i had available and any minor modifications but what i actually like to do is when i do make a modification i like to come back to this and uh, actually change things uh, change things up something i notice i haven't modified is the lectern just here this is the old style lectern uh, you can see i've copied it loads of times because of that name right there um, that's the other thing 
all the pieces aren't always available. Uh, Bricklink does, uh, or rather Studio does pretty well at having all of the available pieces um, available for you to actually use. Um, it's much better supported than Lego Digital Designer, which was the first piece of design software for Lego I ever used quite a long time ago. Uh, it hasn't been supported by Lego in quite some time. And uh, now that they own Bricklink, I think they're putting all their efforts into making Studio the uh, consumer design program of choice. There are other programs out there, but I like Bricklink, uh, Bricklink Studio for its simplicity and uh, for the availability of parts and also for one other function which is this little button up here that you can see that's just being cut off by my uh, screen recording and this is an upload to Bricklink button uh, or an add to wanted list button. Now I'm not currently signed into my Bricklink, you have to sign in through this program first but then you can click this button and it'll actually create a wanted list on Bricklink, which you can then go through, select the pieces that you definitely want, take any out that you don't, and uh, that'll end up uh, creating a wanted list you can then search for and buy those pieces. I'm um, not going to talk about that too much today, just because this is a look at Studio, not Bricklink itself. May do a follow-up video in future to go ahead and do that. Something that I thought might be interesting was to take a look at the evolution of my design of the Great Hall. Just focusing on this because it keeps things nice and simple. Because um, obviously I use Bricklink for designing stuff before I go ahead, uh, or I use Studio for designing stuff before I go ahead and build it in real life. So I thought I'd just show you a little bit of that process. I've talked about it before, but I've never quite shown it. So if this will behave, first things first, uh, this is a separate file to my main Hogwarts file. I like to keep uh, kind of individual ones for each of the different parts of Hogwarts. That way I can tinker around with them and then put them into the main version um, afterwards. So the first thing I did when I was designing this part of Hogwarts was I built two of the pre-existing Lego sets. So first up we have this Great Hall, which is from the 2010 Hogwarts Castle. And then here we have the Great Hall set from 2018. And I knew I wanted to use bits and pieces from both of them, as I had both sets. Um, so then we move down to the first iteration of the Great Hall that I built. It's a little bit tricky to see because there are other things in the way. So this was the first thing that I built and uh, you can see it's quite similar to the final product. However, there some, are some uh, significant changes. You can see here I increased the height of the Great Hall by two bricks, which allowed me to put in another one of those windows. And I also then went ahead and lengthened it. So uh, you can see the clock on this one is actually in front of the wall. And then if we go to the next version, it's actually underneath the arch. So uh, this is the kind of evolution of my design of the Great Hall, and you can see the difference in size between the original set and its height down here. In fact, the height of the Grand Staircase Tower is about the eventual height of this top spire of the Great Hall. And when you actually go to the uh, new version of Hogwarts that I've created, I'm just craning my neck up at it now, um, it's at least half as high again before you get to the top of my proper Grand Staircase Tower. So that's the kind of evolution of building. Um, this is actually quite a neat evolution. There's uh, some projects which have been a lot messier. The uh, long gallery took a long time to get right, but I'm actually not gonna show you that today, just because there's a room in there that I don't want to spoil for you, as it's one that I'm going to be doing in a video very soon. Um, I always think it's quite important to keep previous iterations of something that you've designed um, just because uh, there's always things you might want to come back to. So for instance, I've now changed the design of these hanging dishes here and I've also changed the design of the uh, wooden arches up above. So uh, yeah, I might want to go back to that someday. And uh, in fact, even the latest version in this still has the older version. If we go back to the uh, main Hogwarts file, you'll be able to see things look very different um, when you actually come into the Great Hall. And I'm very happy with how things are looking, but it's always nice to know that there's a place to go back to. So let's return to the main model. I'll try not to spoil a couple of bits that I haven't actually built in real life yet. Um, yeah, so this is where I keep everything for Hogwarts. Uh, spoilers at the back there. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's taken a while. It's a very big uh, file. In fact, I can tell you how many pieces there are in my current design. There's a function at the top. Uh, if you go on to um, model, 
and then go on to model info, it'll actually bring up a uh, box here. So the currently designed Hogwarts has uh, 14,610 pieces. Um, I haven't built all of that yet. That's including the clock tower courtyard and places. Um, and according to this, if I wanted to buy all the pieces from Bricklink, it would cost me 1,828 pounds, which uh, thankfully I don't think it's cost me quite that much as I had some of the pieces already. Um, but yeah, if you have any ambitions of building anything like this from scratch, I'm afraid that's what it's going to cost you. So there we go. That was a bit of a sort of random rambling look at how I go about designing my uh, builds. There's obviously a lot more to it than that. There's a lot of trial and error. And the files that I've shown you are actually some of the ones that I've tidied up afterwards. In a lot of cases, I end up with, uh, you know, random digital pieces strewn everywhere and eventually come to some sort of conclusion. Um, so if you've got any questions about how I build things um, or in fact, how to use Studio, um, I've basically I've kind of just shown you the basics there. Um, there are all sorts of other functions that you can use and there's sort of you know cloning functions and um, and there's actually the instruction maker which is a whole other kettle of fish and um, if you want me to do a video on that in the future then I will do although it is very complicated um, so thanks very much for watching sorry there's been a bit of a delay in getting new build videos out just waiting for some bricklink orders to come in hopefully those will come in this week and then on friday i'll be able to bring you the next part of hogwarts which you can kind of see just there uh, but i'll rotate away <laughs> so you can't see it uh, try not to spoil things too much for you uh, so thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed then please subscribe for future videos and future hogwarts updates give the video a like down below leave a comment and let me know what you think and if you do want to support the channel then links to my patreon are in the description thanks very much and i'll see you soon